This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Hello and welcome along to the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli plus the Resto Racing Championship here at Snetterton. Mike Vice, we've not seen you for a round or two. Great to see you back on the grid here. How's the qualifying gone so far? Uh, it went fine in terms of uh, arriving at fourth. To be honest, I was um, expecting a bit better. I struggled with some understeer in the wet here. We've made some changes and I'm looking for better in the race. Quite a contrast to the last time we saw you out in the championship, which was on the Brands GP circuit, which was a, a great weekend as well. Cracking weekend, yes. Uh, good results for me on there, but actually, the, particularly the first race, uh, the, the, the manner of a P2, I think I went past a total of about 14 cars because I had to do it twice, uh, having, <laughs> having made a, a bad start and then later made a bit of a mistake and got caught out with uh, cars passing and then had to go all past them again. So fantastic racing. I, mean, I don't think we'll have the same sort of uh, games played in this race in the wet, but you never know. I mean, it's, I think it might be a drying track. Last time out at Brands Hatch, great weekend one of the days, not so great the other day. And uh, now because of that, I believe we're now using a sister car. Yep, yep. <coughs> Good friend um, got me back in the car again, so yeah, ready to go again. And this one is Kevin Moody's car, isn't it? Which were both built at the same time, so everyone's happy enough that yeah. with it being an identical car, it's good to race. Yeah, identical, yeah. No, no changes at all. So. Now, known for your start, so you're going to take a little bit steadier to start off with. I mean, you had some cracking pace at the Brands Hatch. Yeah, the pace was there, and obviously we had good pace yesterday in the dry. We've made some more changes since quality because I wasn't really happy with that. So yeah, just see, see how it goes. Normally I'm okay in the wet, it's just um, it is quite torrential out there. You're not the best of uh, weathers here, and yet you've got pole position in class there, and uh, not many have done that before in front of Ben. No, I'm, I'm over the moon with the result that come out of it. Um, we didn't do no testing here yesterday. I've done a few laps around here about six months ago. I've never driven the car in the wet, but the settings that we, we went for, we guessed up, seemed to, seemed to work well. Um, I found a little bit of gap right on the final lap and I managed to hook it all up and get a nice clean lap through. I think the uh, the 911s that were in front seemed to clear a little bit of at the spray out of the way. I think four of them passed me just before the start finish. Um, so I think that obviously aided me to have a bit of a clearer line, but treacherous conditions. James, we last saw you out at Brands Hatch, some great podium wins there. It's now announced, first time on wets, I believe. Yeah, first time out on the new tyre. Yeah, really liked them. Loads of grip on them. So yeah, really pleased. And again, you got poles, so it's obviously worked. Yeah, that's down to the lads really with the setup they put in the car. Just found loads of grip after lap two, which was the quickest lap. Yeah, just loads of grip and it kept coming. So pushed it as hard as I could. A couple of little little ops nearly, but no, pretty tidy overall. Some very modest drivers in, in the grid listening to those interviews and, and that really epitomises this championship. It's a super championship. Here's the grid, a full grid of 32 cars here at Snetterton. Pole position to Simon Clark, the championship leader. Peter Morris next to him from Chris Dyer and Michael Price. The class two pole, James Coleman, seventh overall. And he's got a couple of class one cars between himself and second in class Angus Archer. Then Kevin Molyneux and class two championship leader Ross Morris. The Resto Racing Championship runners headed, as you heard, by William Heslop from Ben McLaughlin, Simon Ruffle Ward and Paul Blakesley, very much Paul on uh, home tarmac this weekend in the Porsche Centre Cambridge machine. So it is a, a massive grid and in these conditions it's going to be a big ask for the drivers to get home in one piece and keep it on the track. In car with Steve Freeman and you can see there's a little bit of a hold up there on the start. That was I think Del Brett. Uh, as possibly impinged on the start there of Jake McAleer. Yes, it was Dell. Well, Dell qualified ahead of Jake McAleer. Of course, our previous race winner, Jake McAleer, 
and it's difficult conditions and well nobody to blame there big field nerves are going to be rattling a little bit and they go into the hairpin for the first time it was a good start from Pete Morris on the front row of the grid who leads as we look at some of the middle order drivers there you can see James Cayley in the 50 car but it's Pete Morris leading from Simon Clark these two very much battling it out towards the top end of the championship as Clark look at Clark's determination to get the inside line down into Agostini it wasn't quite room uh, Ayrton Senna might have gone for it but Simon Clark deciding I think rightly in the conditions that discretion the better part of Valor Clark gets a very good run out of Agostini down the straight into Hamilton and gets the lead in the Cayman from the 997 of Pete Morris so Morris's lead is short-lived or is it because he snakes his way back through on the inside line goodness me superb racing for the lead as again look how look how difficult it is Clark's uh, fish tailing there and Pete Morris looking through on the inside line again but it was a much better run onto the Bentley straight here for Simon Clark the championship leader and pole position man it goes through now riding on board with the 21 car that's Sam Beckett Sam running in the Porsche Centre Wilmslow car issues unfortunately for Carl Hazelton Carl who's done a couple of other races a couple of extra races you might remember outside the rest of the racing championship on day one of our double header in the last Brands Hatch meeting that we had Peter Morris going through there is the uh, number seven car Michael Price who we heard from running in fourth place at the moment Chris Dyer having a good run as well and Chris is in third place so it's very much Cayman's versus 997's at the moment at the head of the field and there is Mark McAleer Mark running at the moment in sixth position in the championship trying to close down the points on Andy Toon and ahead of him the returning Kevin Harrison really good to hear from him after that uh, huge damage that he suffered in qualifying in day two at Brands Hatch having taken a double win on day one on the Indy circuit we have had some great racing but always a major shame to see any damage to that magnitude Oils sponsored Strasser prepared Cayman looking up the inside line now Simon Clark building a bit of a lead now Peter Morris still in second place and you can see it's a, a very very wet track indeed now who's leading in the resto racing class there in 32 is William Heslop that's the Porsche Centre Wolverhampton machine and you can see it's Ben McLaughlin in fact in yellow in the distance has got through into lead position McLaughlin qualified second as we go in car with Steve Freeman this is what the drivers have to deal with Steve Freeman here putting pressure on William Heslop who runs a little bit wide gets a bit of opposite lock Steve Freeman in the class two box to going through on the inside line there is the is Mark Duncan in the blue and yellow Glasgow car now being chased by the recovering Carl Hazelton. Carl who qualified in 12th position in class class 3 being the rest of racing the classic livery boxsters William Heslop going well actually dicing with Ross Morris there in number 3 he's the championship leader Ross Morris and immediately in front of Ross is Del Brett in the class 1 997 car Del you might remember joined us in round 2 this year missed Donington Park the opening round but joined us for the his first event of the season which was the Brands Hatch Grand Prix round on the Blancpain supporting package which was a, a mega I was going to say mega weekend overall it was a good weekend but the club championship racing on day one there rather than spread across the two days as Michael Price stays in front of Kevin Harrison and Mark McAleer makes a move down the inside line McAleer passes Kevin Harrison good to see Harrison back but doesn't look like the start he wants in this race as Mark McAleer makes up the position Mark winner of round three so we've got two of our race winners from Brands Hatch on the Indy circuit together there here at Snetterton hope things brighten up for our second race very tricky conditions and uh, always say that extreme wet and Porsches would prob probably be my driving nightmare a most difficult scenario so I take my hat off to the drivers doing so well here still Chris Dyer in third Peter Morris in second there is Mark McAleer 
actually putting a little bit of space now over Kevin Harrison. Steve Freeman up ahead of Ross Morris. We've still got James Coleman, who is at the head of the Class 2 cars. And Steve Freeman running well at the moment in class. There is Jake McAleer and Ben McLaughlin. What a level of the way is Ben McLaughlin has got a good lead over the other Class 3 cars. You can just see if, at the back of that previous shot as they come along the straight, the flash of pink of Will Heslop's car, which was going through the uh, the final corner on the lap. There in car number 46 is Wayne Minogue, the Porsche Centre Nottingham car. Did well at Brands Hatch with the podium on the Blancpain meeting. And this is the Wilson hairpin with Ross Morris, multiple winner this year, won the first three races of the championship, was back on the top step of the podium for Class 2 in race two at Brands Hatch. There in 55 is Scott Adams, the Welshman, who we had a chat with at, at Brands Hatch, learning his craft and uh, doing very well as McLaughlin continues to lead. And that's great driving from Ben McLaughlin, leaves the door open for Steve Freeman and Ross Morris to go through. It's a much more standard car, that yellow one, and the Porsche Centre Bournemouth, the car that leads. They're on a sideways moment here for Andy Baker, another newcomer to the championship, joined us at Brands Hatch for the first time. Day two at Brands Hatch was Andy's debut, having a little bit of a moment there. But this is a super battle between Ross Morris and Steve Freeman, who we're on board with. Meanwhile, frenetic battle going on in Class 3. Mike Thompson in the number six car. Porsche Center Bolton machine. As uh, we can see, Mike Price is making a little bit of ground up here on Chris Dyer. And as they come along the center straight, looks to the outside line, comes out of the spray. Dyer, meanwhile, is trying to hunt down Peter Morris. So this is second, third, and fourth position, all having a great race of things at the moment here. Price up into third place now. Then Chris Dyer in the Miller's Oils back Strauss prepared car. And then Mark McAleer who's making good progress here. So a three-way battle at the moment for third place. It's still Simon Clark leading from Pete Morris and McAleer, multi-champion of course, with another champion immediately ahead of him. And he's the man who's looking to win the championship for the first time. He'll be, if he does win it, he's in position to do that at the moment, being championship leader be the first driver to take it in uh, Cayman as well, who was the first driver to win in the Cayman last year with Simon Clark and had a super year. Obviously, development work to be done on the 997s. Still feeling their way. There is Pete Morris in second. Michael Price in third place in his two races at Grand Sanch, the long hand into took second and third. And as you heard from the interviews, raced well. There is James Coleman in the white, green and black Boxster ahead of the two Class 3 Boxsters of Simon Ruffle, Ward and Welshman Scott Adams in the Porsche Centre Cardiff car, so Leeds v Cardiff having a good battle there. Leeds fifth in the Restoration Championship at the moment. There is Wayne Minogue, I think that PC Nottingham car is six in the standings coming into this race. And Scott Adams having a look down the inside line of Simon Ruffle, Ward, both of these two our newcomers to motor racing, courtesy of this wonderful innovation that, that Porsche have put together. And you can see that they've got the yellow square with the black cross indicating their new drivers, but learning their craft well. What a super environment. The cars were more standard last year. They've had small mods this year. The modifications on the car. The drivers have had to learn about that as well. Through shot goes Toby Barlow from Ross Morris there third and fourth at the moment in class two. Simon Ruffleward goes a little bit wide there. That's going out of Palmer corner, about to head down into Agostini. And here's the run, very slightly downhill on the infield now. And Scott Adams read that superbly and he's going to go through on the inside line. Scott Adams makes it through. That's sixth position in class three for the Welshman. Both of those uh, guys who we spoke to 
at Brands Hatch and thoroughly enjoying their racing and, and learning their craft. There is Pete Morris, a master craftsman, as ever there were, in uh, Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship Racing. Mark McAleer, another of those masters as well. Those two, so much experience and great to see Michael Price in the mix as well. Busy challenging for second place. It's a keen fight between those two. The Cayman is running well. The Cayman of race leader Simon Clark is pulling away from these, but certainly with these two battling, that will help him maybe eke out a little bit more in the gap as things go on. That was the pole position man in Pink Pick, William Heslop. Ben McLaughlin still leading class three, as he has done for much of the season. There's Jake McAleer running well. Jake up ahead of Sam Beckett. Then James Coleman, the leading class two runner. And James has got a pretty good lead if you look back from this 47 car uh, treble class two winner last time out at Brands Hatch on his debut with the championship he used to race with the BRSCC Porsche championship was runner-up in that championship last year another graduate of that championship there Angus Archer in white and blue with Del Brett immediately ahead in class one Del having recovered from that problematic start so it's Del, Del Brett from Angus Archer, then Mike Thompson in the Class 3, number 6 car, Carl Hazelton, then the 39 machine of Ollie Coles. Ollie had a non-finishing race one at Brands last time out, so good to see him running and getting some mileage in the Coca-Cola liveried uh, car, which is from Porsche Centre Swindon. So many cars to cover in this championship, indeed this rate elite. Race. The elite mode is number 10 of Julian Morris. There in 49 is Stephen Shaw. Again, you can see another newcomer. So we've got a lot of long serving racing drivers running in classes one and two, and a lot of newcomers in class three. So it's very much a mixed grid as we go on to the last lap. Now, crossing the line is the race leader, and it is Simon Clark looking amazingly only his third win of the year it's been a very competitive championship in terms of different winners that we've had this year but Clark has been so consistent his drop score as I think I mentioned earlier on in the race is a 10th place round two at Donington Park and Clark 20 seconds clear of Peter Morris in this race there is Peter in car number two Mike Price still challenging for second place in the number seven car and getting closer to Pete Morris as they go through Riches and the back end swaps around on the seven car. He very nearly held it, nudges the barrier, little bit of damage on the Pharrell car and hopefully he'll get going again, but he'll, I think, lose third place now. But, well, he will. Mark McAleer's through into third. May well lose fourth is what I was intending to say. Chris Dyer could well go back up into fourth place. Here is James Coleman. James running in ninth place, so inside the top ten is James Coleman here and uh, two top tens of Brands Hatch was 11th in his first race so top 10 overall good for a class 2 car as Simon Clark negotiates the 41 car which is Kevin Molyneux Kevin running in 6th position at the moment in class 2 and Terry saw Chris Dyer they're running in 4th position overall Ross Morris being chased by Wayne Minogue, who is fifth in the rest of racing class. Ross, the championship leader, should maintain that over Matt Kyle Henney, who's not racing with us this weekend, sadly. So Matt will be closed in on by Steve Freeman. Maybe not enough in this race. As Ross Morris, there is uh, Toby Barlow running in third ahead of Ross Morris. So Ross fourth at the moment. He'll be eager to get back on the podium having taken the race win final race of the weekend at Brands Hatch race four but round Corum for the last time goes Simon Clark this has been a super drive by Simon Clark did a lot of work in qualifying with the wet weather has had even more work to do here to negotiate a lot of traffic here at Snetterton on the 300 circuit Simon Clark will take win number three of the season there is the checker Simon Clark takes the win here at Snetterton some way clear immediately behind him were the uh, class three runners but we're looking at the battle of the second position Pete Morris has got some traffic he's got Carl Hazelton in the Martini livery 24 passes him Mark McAleer goes past as well we've got Duncan Mark Duncan immediately ahead as well but Pete Morris takes second from Mark McAleer you can see there 
in the 49 car is Stephen Shaw, who just got the better of Mark Duncan in Class 3. And the recovering Michael Price, who's on his way to 8th place, just saw Jake McAleer going out of shot, who is immediately up ahead of him. Julian Morris battling for top 10 with Mike Thompson, Thompson ninth in class in blue. Ollie Cole's immediately ahead of them. As through goes Ben McLaughlin. Ben McLaughlin 16th overall, but another class win for Ben McLaughlin in the Porsche Centre Bournemouth car. There is Jake McAleer who finishes in seventh place. Watch for the green car in the background, which will be Michael Price. In the mix as well is Paul Blakesley there. Number 80 car finishes second to Ben McLaughlin in class three. And here comes James Coleman who will win class two. Great performance from James Coleman. Lead lap, top 10 finish again for James Coleman in the 47 car. We've got quite a few machines still on the lead lap battling it out. Angus Archer is second, he's just gone out of shot. And now Ross Morris has gone ahead of Toby Barlow to take third place. So Ross Morris in the, in the number three car in the closing stages has passed double podium man of Brands Hatch, Toby Barlow to take third. I think he's going to hold on to it as well. Down towards the flag. Good end to the race there, Ross. Hand the laughed out of the car, immediately ahead of him, the blue and white. Number 70, Angus Archer, takes another class two podium, but it was Ross Morris behind him in third place, then Toby Barlow. Steve Freeman taking fifth place in class, ahead of Kevin Molyneux. But the winner, once again, third time this year, Simon Clark will extend his championship lead going into the anti-penultimate race of the season here at Snetterton. So here's the result, Clark from Morrison McAleer, McAleer Senior that is, ahead of Chris Dyer, then Andy Toon and James Cayley, Jake McAleer next to Michael Price, James Coleman winning Class 2, Delbrett next up, second in Class 2, Angus Archer from Ross Morris, the rest of racing championship race won by Ben McLaughlin from Paul Blakesley, with William Heslop in third and Sam Beckett in fourth. Well, from a spectator point of view, that looked amazingly easy. What, what a hell of a lead! Yeah, well, it was. Um, yeah, as soon as I cleared P, I was I kind of fairly, was fairly confident I was going to have the pace based on qualifying. So it's just a case of really just trying to get maintain a bit of a lead, and then I could pick any line I wanted, which was quite important actually, because the tyres towards the second half, well, the second half of the race onwards, were massively overheated. So it was a fairly un, like uneventful race for me, but I'll take it. It was a yeah, it was good. It's good. The chassis has been really well set up and. Yeah, really happy with it. Well, the nickname Podium Pete is consistent. We've got another second place after following from Brand, so it's a good start to the weekend. Yeah, I think it's going to be tricky conditions. and uh, Cars are heavy, I had a cracking start, but the, the, the grip of the Cayman is just far superior, so we swapped up about three places on the first lap. Mr Price caught me up, and we, we had a cracking race, all, all, and then Mr McAleer managed to get third, because Michael spun on the last segment last lap. <laughs> after the great success of Brand's Hatch uh, for the team, that was quite a tricky race, uh, this first one in Snetterton. Yeah, well obviously qualifying made it difficult for the race anyway really. We didn't uh, we didn't qualify where we hoped to. We had a couple of problems with both cars. Um, but then we had a couple of changes with the 997 because to be fair, I mean, this is the first time we've used the 997 in the wet. So it was really much of a, a testing session if anything. So to get a podium out of that, we're, uh, we're very happy. Yes, congratulations. Great to see you on the podium there. Not an easy race. Not at all, no. That's um, the first time I've raced on full wets for a long time and um, same for everyone obviously but quite lively quite uh, quite interesting yeah actually honestly there's so much spray it was just a little bit of luck of luck of the draw we just you know we had a little chat on the grids a few of the guys also in the collection area a few of the guys um just said look be sensible first corner uh, it's a long race it's you know, you're not gonna win on the first corner and thankfully everyone got around it's all good victory on the third place there but uh, not an easy race no it's, it's really difficult i mean i qualified fourth but i, I got a great start off the line up to second place, I think, and then going out round to the back onto the back straight, it just had no grip on the outside, and it just went round. And I thought, I thought someone was going to collect me and, and damage the car, but everyone managed to miss me, and I got the car started again. And so on the last lap, I managed to just get alongside and pass Toby, but he didn't make it easy. Ben, no strangers there to the old podium. Another fantastic win there. Tricky conditions for all. 
it was <laughs> very much so. We went out in uh, in qualifying, and it was damp to start with, got wetter. It was a very, very tricky. Went out on what we call our dry tyres. And qualified second, which was fine. Will put a fantastic time just down there, and he put a fantastic time on with the, with the wet. So we thought, okay, let's put those tyres on for the race. But I made a great start. I knew I had a nice gap, so I could just relax and just explore the track a little. And, and yeah, it was just developing the lines, the normal line on others. So now I think I've got, I've got it sussed in the wet. So I feel more confident now for the next race. So James, one of our newer drivers, this is your first uh, full season and um, you've just done your first race in the wet. Yes, I know, it's very exciting, very good. Um, I qualified 13th, uh, managed to make a few places up on the first lap and um, yeah, as things dried out, I managed to work my way through. There's a few spun in front of me, so uh, I was really pleased with P6 at the end. So uh, um, yeah, really, really exciting and uh, a, a good first wet race, I think. Bit of a baptism of fire for you. First season, as we say, only just taking the rookie cross off as well. Yes, so it's kind of uh, nice to take that off yesterday when we we're here testing. So just got my national A license, um, and uh, yeah, having this is my home circuit. So I've probably raced here or I've done more track days here than I have. So I probably know this circuit a bit better than I know some of the other ones. But even so, going in the wet was uh, yeah pretty exciting this morning. Well, it's been quite a while since we caught up with you, have a bit of a chat now. Second full season that you're doing this year. How's it gone so far? Well, it's been a really fun season, I, I must say. <clears throat> we're uh, we're out in the 997 for the first time uh, meaningfully this year. Last year we had it out once, but we, uh, we blew our engine up the first time out at Silverstone. So this year the car's been running really well. We're getting it uh, set up and, and getting a bit of driver development going. So uh, very good, we're, we're having a really enjoyable season so far. My previous racing was in open wheel cars back in, in the States and Canada, back in the 90s. And uh, whilst I thought I knew quite a lot, I realized when I came out with this crowd that uh, I have a lot to learn, and, and I still do. But little by little, we're getting there, and uh, we're hoping to, uh, to climb up in the standings as, the, as time goes by. How do you think the season's gone so far for you? Season's going really well. Um, l last year, I was just learning the car, really, because that was our first season out for me in this car. Um, this season, yeah, I really feel, feel I've got to grips with it. We had a, I think we had a season best of four, fourth place at Bruns Hatch last time out and um, although I didn't feel totally comfortable out there I'm both very very different tracks yeah um, normally I, yeah, I'd say the Indy but the GP this year actually I, I really enjoyed it and bizarrely enough it was raining when we went there and um, the car the setup of the car happened to be just right so I was actually really enjoying that um, today obviously we're all in the same boat so we'll, we'll see how we go Good momentum for Andy Toon in the championship and he lines up in this race in seventh position. The grid headed by Simon Clark from Chris Dyer, Peter Morris and Michael Price, then Mark McAleer, class two pole man, James Coleman. Second in class two, Kevin Molyneux from Angus Archer and Ross Morris, class three. Before we get to class three, worth giving a shout out to Jake McAleer who starts at the back of the class ones and twos. Class three pole to Ben McLaughlin from William Heslop, Simon Ruffle Ward and Paul Blakesley then Sam Beckett and Ollie Coles. 32 cars again expected to take to a very crowded grid, but conditions a lot better as the lights go on. Out go the lights and off the line. Good start by all. Maybe Mike Price won't be too happy with his in the seven car. He hasn't lost much ground. The side by side, Simon Clark and Chris Dyer on the outside line. Then Pete Morris as a look to the inside line of Michael Price by Andy Toon. I think Andy's gone through there as the Leaders in class two, it is a good lead at the moment in class two for James Coleman. So, what made the super start? In actual fact, James Coleman, I think, was passed by Kevin Molyneux, had a very good start, so Molyneux leading. We've had a change for the lead as they came around the hairpin, just trying to survey the field. There's confirmation of that change for the lead. And it is Chris Dyer out front from Pete Morris, who was side by side with Simon Clark, who's down to third. James Cayley there up ahead of Ross Morris. Here are the leaders now sorting themselves out. Simon Clark looking to try and get second back and also defending from Michael Price, who maybe wasn't as quick off the line as I thought he could have been, but he's up in fourth place. So Price on a little bit of a charge, looks on the inside line of the championship leader, side by side. Cayman on the outside, 997 on the inside, and the Cayman gets the better run out of Hamilton corner into Oggies. So Simon Clark in third place. This race is very definitely on. Remember that Simon Clark championship leader pole position for both races. As you saw the class two battle going through.
and it is Kevin Molyneux leading class two at the moment has caught James Coleman James Coleman the car just to the left of shot is second in class two those two with a brace of class one cars between themselves and the other podium battlers for class two which I think is entirely Boxster uh, this weekend yes it is James Cayley side by side with Del Brett Del's on the wide line here tight line from James Cayley career best for him in race number one as you heard and then it's Ross Morris in behind so that means that Ross is holding third position in class two at the moment then it's Steve Freeman and Jake McAleer has come through from the back of the field has passed quite a few of his erstwhile classmates to head up towards the battlers in class one Jake, I think, has now lost second position in the championship to Pete Morris. There was only seven points between the two of them. Morris in second place at the moment. Chris Dyer has already had one win so far this year. Led the championship after Donington Park with a six and a first. That shows how competitive it's been. And this is super, isn't it? Because look at the lead six or seven cars, all pretty much still occupying the same amount of tarmac as we watch the 69 car of Mark Duncan. Mark running well and Wayne Minogue coming under pressure here on the inside line of Julian Morris the Elite Motors car has made good progress here actually Julian qualified in 10th Wayne Minogue seventh in class and then down behind them the 21 the Porsche Centre Wilmslow car of Sam Beckett we saw Alistair Nelson driving that car in the opening round of the year so not too far away as we go back with the outright lead group still headed by Chris Dyer looking for outright win of his career number two but has had a plethora of class two wins in his career where he took the overall championship a few seasons ago Pete Morris still in second field starts to get spread out the more standard class three cars of course the the great thing about having such a big grid and the multi-class structure is that wherever you're standing on track you've got something to watch pretty much all the time after the first couple of laps we go in car Sam Beckett qualified fifth in class behind Paul Blakesley and uh, will be looking to get involved in that battle but the lead quintet nothing to choose between those Andy Toon not that far away either in sixth position hoping to equal his fifth it was his second fifth position of the year had a couple of fourths as you heard at Brands Hatch no, had a fourth position rather at Brands Hatch earlier on in the season and uh, at our last ma uh, our last event as Michael Price continues to put the pressure on Simon Clark championship leader meanwhile the rest of the racing guys coming down into Brundle Carl Hazelton enjoying his dice with Simon Ruffle Ward in the Warstein delivery the Chester car though holding the upper hand at the moment and then down behind them it's Scott Adams the Welshman who you can see round by round Scott Adams and indeed many of the other drivers of the rest of the racing championship gaining in confidence gaining in ability as well as they get to grips with these cars and racing in general it's not a full full season for them it's a, I guess a, a, a relatively limited run of races but superb to see these newcomers coming into the sport meanwhile of course we get to watch the seasoned pros at the front and look at this group disputing the lead you've got to say that Chris Dyer looking relatively comfortable at the moment Pete Morris is still in second Simon Clark third Michael Price trying to work out if he can get further up then Mark McAleer Mark looking to continue his climb up the order Mark one of the drivers who will definitely benefit from uh, the drop score scenario on other drivers and will drop his retirement non-start from Donington Park at the uh, very start of the season but Mark as ever has shown his pace the amount of different winners we've had this year has shown how very competitive this championship is the organisers have got things just right a full grid of cars here at Snetterton there aren't too many championships that can say that so Wayne Minogue still coming under pressure from Julian Morris being chased there by Mike Thompson there's a big puff of smoke from Thompson's car is that going to retire Mike Thompson it doesn't look like he's lost anything so I'm not sure what that was as Clark explores a wide line there that was coming out of Corum Michael Price trying to close in Price will have Mark McAleer right behind him but Pete Morris is in second so it's Cayman 997k 
Cayman and then a brace of 997s. Ben McLaughlin is still there from William Heslop. Those two, one and two, and not that much between them at the moment, to be absolutely fair. William Heslop, I know, was delighted with that pole position, and we heard the story that uh, Ben, I think, intimating it, it came down to tyres, but uh, Ben McLaughlin running so well in the uh, Wolverhampton car which is second in the championship ahead of the Porsche Centre Cambridge machine and will have consolidated that a little further this weekend as the Cardiff car now chases the Leeds car good battle on between those two and that's for 11th position in the rest of the racing class the number six car still going so Mike Thompson still going he hasn't lost that ground I'm not sure what the smoke was but uh, still going as through the uh, through our camera shot goes uh, Ollie Coles who's looking to try and get the Coca-Cola car back on the podium Cole Hazelton being chased by Mark McCulloch then Simon Ruffle Ward as uh, the race leaders now starting to get into a little bit of class three traffic and Pete Morris now passed by Michael Price and there was a little bit of was there contact there Michael Price trying to deal with the Porsche Centre Glasgow car they got very very close indeed and that was at the complex so Michael Price up into second Chris Dyer is away and down the road at the moment so Chris Dyer looking very healthy in lead position Mark McAleer will now get to renew his rivalry with Peter Morris which will be good to see this is the first and second in the rest of racing championship and now do we see Simon Clark's car parked up there Simon Clark I think is out of the race so up into second position now goes Michael Price Ollie Coles, this is third and fourth in the rest of racing class. Ollie Coles up ahead of Paul Blakesley. And the man currently running second in class two, car number 47, is James Coleman. Toby Barlow leading class now. So James Coleman down to second. There is, uh, here comes Toby Barlow in the 48 car. Then the Rothmans livery of Stephen Shaw running in 13th place in class three. And then 47. James Coleman which means that next up is in fact the number three car Ross Morris third in class Kevin Molyneux who was the pace setter in class two in the very early stages running fourth position in class two and Jake McAleer things do not look happy on the 44 car who is slowing up Mark McCulloch going through ahead of him in class three and Jake McAleer becomes a second high profile retirement of the race following Simon Clark into retirement so we've lost the championship leader we've lost the man coming into this event was second in the championship as well this is the battle for the lead in class three Ben McLaughlin still there up ahead of William Heslop these two developing a rivalry remember that Ben McLaughlin's car has a fair amount of ballast due to the extra experience that Ben has and Ben drove a super race in race number one but as I say, does carry the extra ballast over the other runners to even things up. A little bit of flapping on the number two car of Peter Morris. I'll remind you, it's Chris Dyer, the race leader at the moment, from Michael Price. Peter Morris in third from Mark McAleer. Then Andy Toon, there's Andy Baker. Julian Morris goes through with some rear-end damage. But still going is Julian. Michael Price about to try and put the position on him. Looks on the inside line up into the hairpin, which is turn two. Price hard on the brakes, Julian's seen him, goes wide, not ultra wide, but plenty wide enough for the Class 1 car to come through. Then, great driving, goes to the outside of the next corner to allow Pete Morris and Mark McAleer through. So, very well done indeed to Julian Morris, who saw those guys. Lights on from McAleer. The McAleer-Morris battling we've seen many, many years. Julian Morris going onto the grass, which unsettles him a little bit. Look at the line there, the wider line into Agostini for... Mark McAleer here is the 47 car then of James Coleman then Scott Adams in the 55 the Welshman still making progress just outside the top 10 in the rest of racing class at the moment as we watch Wayne Minogue 
coming down the straight up ahead of Sam Beckett and next up is uh, our class two leader so that last shot the two one and two in, in class two Toby Barlow up ahead of James Coleman we could be heading for a maiden class championship win here for Toby Barlow as Chris Dyer continues to lead there is Ollie Coles running in third position in the rest of racing class it's a good return to form for the Porsche Centre Swindon car which is running well Scott Adams about to I think be passed there by Del Brett there again to the right hand of your shot is Simon Clark sadly parked up I think on drop scores though still in a very healthy championship position as past Ollie Coles goes Michael Price here so only Mike's fourth race of the season and it's going to be a third podium if he carries on like this Pete Morris is still being challenged hard by Mark McAleer it's a very close race between those three McAleer length or so a couple of legs down at the moment on Pete Morris as they go on to the last lap both of those drivers have had plenty of wins here at Snedson Mark having won last year Mark's up to winning the other race but Mark McAleer has won here in 2006 2007 2013 and last year Pete Morris winning here in 2008 and 2015 both of whom have had plenty of fastest laps here Simon Clark second last year got a fastest lap as well but uh, all to no avail here as the battle between Wayne Minogue and Sam Beckett for seventh position carries on Carl Hazelton is in ninth behind them and at the moment Beckett's got the upper hand over Wayne Minogue we go in car with Wayne another newcomer to racing shows how competitive class three is because Wayne in his previous outing was uh, up on the podium a good three-way fight between those three drivers as the battle for the lead comes down the straight here into the Brundle Nelson complex McLaughlin's got the lead but William Heslop in the Wolverhampton centre Pink Pig is putting big big pressure on the championship leader here what a race we've got in class three through bomb hole heading down towards core and once again they go that's a great battle and also now the battle here with uh, Sam Beckett behind him Wayne Minogue coming under pressure from Carl Hazelton had a look down the inside line in the Porsche centre Chester machine and then behind them it's Toby Barlow still leading in class two back to the podium battle in class one and overall Mark McAleer and Peter Morris both with their lights ablaze in case they encounter any more traffic McAleer taking a nice wide line there but it's Chris Dyer who is going to take a second career win overall win the former class two former overall champion is going to take another win here what a drive it's been from Chris Dyer the Yorkshireman is going to take the chequered flag there it is Dyer takes the win and he's about four seconds clear of Michael Price who bags another podium Pete Morris third Mark McAleer is fourth Andy Toon will take fifth position we look back there is Andy in red and black the number four car then it's James Cayley followed by the 39 car of Ollie Coles who's going to finish in third position in the resto racing class but Toby Barlow is going to take a, a maiden win in class two we are on board with the 21 car which is Sam Beckett running in seventh position in the class threes great shot into Agostini this man here James Coleman is going to bag another podium it's going to be interesting to see whether how much further he's gone up the championship table and came into the event in eighth place as Toby Barlow wins class two a win for Barlow second position will go to James Coleman there he is there back of shot the white green and black car third position in class is going to be between Kevin Molyneux and Ross Morris there is Ross in the uh, number three car now it's Kevin Molyneux that grabbed the podium on that occasion Ross Morris in black and red just behind the 22 car is Mark McCulloch finishes in 10th place a so top 10 in class three for Mark McCulloch and now we've got a new leader in class three William Heslop on the last lap is ahead of Ben McLaughlin he's got the fastest lap as well that was three laps ago but having a good go Ben McLaughlin all over the back of him as they go into Cora if there's a gap which there is but there's momentum around the outside line here from William Heslop in the Wolverhampton car. So is it going to be the Porsche centre Wolverhampton machine or the Bournemouth car that will take the win? Heslop, I think, is inch perfect as they come out of Murray's for the last time. McLaughlin's going to try and get the run along centre straight towards the flag. 
It's going to be a great close finish between these two, but William Heslop will take the win ahead of Ben McLaughlin. Superb racing once again in Class 3. A great race between those two, proving the worth of that competition. So Chris Dyer taking the overall win from Michael Price and Pete Morris. Mark McAlee next up from Andy Toon and James Cayley. Toby Barlow wins Class 2. James Coleman next up, Kevin Molyneux third in class from Ross Morris. Fastest lap to Chris Dyer and Toby Barlow. William Heslop win and fastest lap in the rest of racing class ahead of Ben McLaughlin. Ollie Coles, Paul Blakely and Julian Morris. I got a good start, managed to keep alongside Simon and just sort of try and Outfox him in at first corner and uh, he outbraked himself and went straight on. I managed to dive up inside and looked across and in my mirrors I could see Pete behind me. I thought, oh well, he's following me through. Just kept hitting my markers, hitting my breaking points and uh, yeah, just kept going. Not a great start, got mugged by a few places, so I knew I had to get some back early because otherwise you get bogged down. I think I managed two at the hairpin. Yeah. And then it was a bit of a grind after that. Pete and I uh, had, a, had a good battle. Very good reward for the team because at the end of the day, they had two hours to take it apart, put it back together again, put new rads, sort the exhaust out, check it all through to get me back out on the grid. So it's, it's one for them, really. Michael never makes it easy. The cars are well, well balanced, well, same power outputs. Uh, it's hard to keep off. He's getting as quick as I am now, <laughs> as you can say. And uh, he had me down the straight, like at 130. Yeah, I got the inside line, two back markers in front, I wasn't going to risk it. Third, third, I set off the third. But cracking race, yeah? Really happy. Really, really, really happy. <laughs> I think that's probably the understatement of the century, yeah. We had, um, we, we did quite well yesterday, we tested yesterday in really similar conditions to this. And we just played around with some damper settings. And um, we found a sweet spot, which we were really, really happy with yesterday. And um, um, But just everything kind of all just... It all just came together, really. Uh, we're starting to get there now, in fairness. We've had a few mechanical failures this weekend, but apart from that, it's been good. Because it was obviously the first one was wet, and then it went to dry, and so it, it was a tough, it was a tough drive. The first one, the second one, dry. So yeah, it's great. Oh, I love it. I love it here. Yeah, yeah. One of my favourites. This one in Donington. I managed to pick off um, Paul in the Cambridge car on like early on, and then it gave me a good run into Ben. Then made an attempt for the second last corner um, on the second to last lap. It just didn't quite pay off, and then we come round, and there was luckily there was enough time on the board to have another go. I knew I was stronger than him, and uh, I managed to stick with him close enough to get a good run onto the back straight and make the move stick. And so over the moon. First time on Snetter 300. Um, it's very te fast and technical. I've raced on the, quite successfully the 200 before, so yeah, the, the 300 is definitely a new challenge today, and luckily it paid off with the P3. So far, the season hasn't been the best. We've had a few issues but all the rounds, some reliability issues. So f to finally break through and have a, a good weekend, two strong finishes, a podium, it's certainly a breath of fresh air to you know finally uh, get that off our back. So how has the complexion of the championship changed? Simon Clark's lead down to 13 points over Pete Morris with Chris Dyer next up, Jake McAleer fourth from Andy Toon, and then Mark McAleer completing the top six. Ross Morris leads by 68 points over Kevin Molyneux with Steve Freeman third from Angus Archer, Matt Carlhenny in fifth, James Coleman from eighth up into sixth. The rest of the racing class headed by the Bournemouth centre car of Ben McLaughlin from PC Wolves, which is William Heslop shared with Christian Short. That's all we've got time for today. Thanks very much for watching the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. And please rejoin us next time out at Alton Park. <laughs>